So I can definitely say that uh, like quarantine has made me a better priest, <laughs> um, pushing me out of my comfort zone, um, helping me realize that there are things that are there that I didn't really notice before. Um, and just, yeah, just like the, the Lord is so faithful. And even in the midst of like this incredible difficulty, there's still a lot of fruit um, being born. So um, yeah, it's been really tough, but it's also been incredibly fruitful too. But down here in Georgia, um, things kind of close um, like pretty immediately, like in mid-March, but even a little bit before that, um, like our bishops here, um, like rescinded the obligation to to, to go to mass. Um, so so like there were a couple stages beforehand, and like you, we saw in the media uh, like a bunch of people talking about this obscure kind of virus, like in January, but then in February it got more real, and then in the March um, we we're hearing about it a lot more here. So um, so yeah, so it's kind of like uh, yeah uh, like a little bit um, of like a downhill, um, but then like we had like the the the, the bishops um, like postpone any type of um, yeah, uh, anything pretty much at the parish. And so my initial reaction was one of, uh, of actually incredible sadness. Um, so, so we got the, uh, the, the um, directive from the bishop to suspend all, like, yeah, any type of gathering at the church. And, like, so I was there at 6.30 a.m. the next day to tell parishioners who didn't get the email. Um, surprise. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so, so then later that day, uh, I, I celebrated Mass um, and said, the Lord be with you, and didn't hear a response. <laughs> it was incredibly saddening. Um, so, so that was, that was probably my, my initial reaction. Um, yeah, it was just kind of funny. A lot of the parishioners have been talking about, um, like, really missing the Eucharist, but uh, I'd, probably the other priests have echoed this as well. Um, our, our, our big uh, heartbreak was missing our parishioners. Yeah, we were we were being appointed an archbishop at the time, but he wasn't actually installed until I think it was July, <laughs> um, because that even got delayed a little bit too because of the whole COVID thing. But ultimately, like we had to we had to kind of wait on like our administrator in terms of like what we could or couldn't do. And so as soon as they said that we can have um, like public outdoor gatherings, we uh, we immediately jumped on the uh, the the whole uh, confession in the parking lot thing. Um, so, so I think, I think it was late March that, um, so like mid March is when they officially canceled like all public, um, gatherings at the parish. And then in late March, by then we were, um, ready to offer the, the sacrament of confession for people outside, you know, six feet apart with masks and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so, so, so ultimately kind of like, um, looking at the directives, um, from, from the administrator, um, but also too, like still making it like a good experience, um, for the people. So People actually got kind of a chuckle out of it of, you know, sitting outside with, a, you know, the priest and we had our stoles on. Um, like we've been doing, uh, yeah, it's like a slow kind of entry um, back into um, masses, you know, with, with pews um, being taped off every other pew and, you know, um, space in between households and all that. Um, we now have a, a parking lot mass <laughs> that people, uh, we have an FM transmitter, and so people will tune in um, while, and they'll sit in their car uh, all mass, and then at the time of communion, they'll go uh, approach the, the priest or the deacon or the extraordinary minister. Um, so things like that, like um, we, we had to get creative um, with, with some things, but um, yeah, it's kind of like the, the case now where, where some things look normal, but at the same time, pretty strange. Um, yeah, we, we, we had uh, Paul Porter, who was finishing up his last semester there at Mundelein, and then we had Robbie Cotta, who was, um, yeah, who, who's now uh, currently in his, his last year. So we, we had the two of them. Um, <laughs> and and I, I, don't, I don't know if you know any of like the audience knows them at all, but they're, they're a riot. Um, they're, they're two of some of the, the funniest guys that, um, that, that I know. So it was, it was, it was a huge joy to, to have them around. When the, Arch, when the Archbishop opened up uh, public gatherings, um, so we were able to have mass, you know, 25% capacity, et cetera, et cetera. There were still a lot of people who were reluctant um, to come in. And even before that, right, there were still people who weren't um, in any way connected to the church. And so early on in quarantine, um, just coming to recognize, like, okay, um, I've been getting emails uh, from parishioners, and, like, they're expressing, like, oh, I don't feel very connected to the to, to St. Bridget anymore. Um, and so I realized at that point, like, okay, th we have to do something, right? We have to in some way engage um, the, the people um, so, so what we did, um, so myself, uh, and Robbie was like, uh, my, my wingman, so to speak. And then, uh, Deacon Paul at the time, he's now Father Paul. Um, he was managing the, uh, the, the camera. And so we did a Facebook live and, uh, we're, we're engaging all our parishioners. We wanted to keep it light. We wanted to keep it fun. We wanted to, um, delve into some profound things every now and then. But, uh, yeah, like the, the biggest part was the engagement. Um, and I, I was actually <laughs> kind of surprised by how much people enjoyed it. Um, cause like, <laughs> 
no offense to, to any of this, but I'm, I'm not the person who really listens to podcasts. I'm not a person who listens to like YouTube videos or anything like that. Um, so, so to see people get a kick out of uh, a priest talking with a seminarian, um, I was like, okay, well, if people are enjoying this, then might as well uh, keep doing it. Um, but, but people were incredibly grateful. Um, I think probably also the, so the biggest thing was like, so for instance, like Deacon, or, yeah, Robbie at the time, he's now Deacon Robbie. Um, he was doing what's called Robbie's rants. And so he would uh, either go on a rant about something good or something bad. It's like incredibly like down to earth and relatable. And so the biggest thing I got from people was they, they saw a different side to a priest and to a seminarian that they normally wouldn't get. And so they actually really appreciated like that aspect of it. Um, yeah, a lot of people recognize that, hey, priests are actually human beings too. Um, should we do a really wonderful thing here for the church, you know, being called by Jesus um, to be a leader? But they also came, came to recognize and appreciated very greatly the, um, yeah, it's like the down to earthness um, that sort of like Facebook Live kind of setting is kind of um, geared towards. So there's no guide to, to um, pandemic. Um, so, yeah, so, so just being like, just really grateful for my time at Mundelein. Um, yeah, like, yeah, I had Bishop Barron as the rector my first three years there, and then uh, Father Karchi my last three years there. Um, yeah, like, both of them were able to, like, really present, like, a vision of priesthood um, that was um, both with, like, the new evangelization, but also, like, with the people. Um, so I appreciated both of their visions um, when it came to that, because, yeah, just, like, my formation just allowed me to, um, yeah, to, to both cope and mourn with the fact of, like, closings and things looking incredibly different. Um, with the fact of, uh, yeah, just like, a, just like really solid formation. Um, cause I'm, I'm, really, I'm incredibly grateful for my time at Mundelein. Um, and so, yeah, so, so to have the, yeah, both of them as, as, as former rectors, um, yeah, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful. This was my Easter reflection this year. I'm just kind of praying with, with the reality of the resurrection and the empty tomb. Um, cause like COVID, um, a lot of like the, the civil unrest kind of stuff, um, like, like the along with Easter, like the the word that keeps coming to mind is exposure. Um, so I think of like the disciples on on the sea. Um, whenever Jesus invites them into the middle of a storm, they they don't really recognize like how much work they still need until they're out there in the middle of of, of that storm. So I kind of feel like that like that like that's what what um, this time has been for me. Um, it's kind of like a, a a realization or a revelation, I would say. Um, in, ter in terms of like, just like, yeah, how the Lord is inviting me to deeper faith, deeper love, deeper hope, um, ultimately in Him. Um, so I'd say that's kind of the fruits, um, just like a deeper intimacy that the Lord's been inviting me to. I I've been seeing y'all uh, post on the Instagram, um, the heroic priest, and then, yeah, I got the email from you like, I, I haven't really done anything, I don't think, of, of, of like, I don't know, notable worth, but um, it's kind of like reflecting on it, just like incredibly grateful because, yeah, um, John, the guy who submitted this, um, yeah, like he, he's been incredibly grateful, but so have many other uh, parishioners. And so like, for me, it's kind of good to take a step back and kind of recognize like, wow, you know, like, yeah, the Lord is inviting me to do something special with uh, with him as a priest.